What's going on guys, Platter McCards in the house, and today I am coming to you with my updated King of the Skull Servants deck post Dimension Force. Now Dimension Force is super dope because it has some super uh, nice extra deck zombie card support, plus I've just been tinkering with it a lot and I think this updated version is probably the best version I have so far. So without further ado, let's get started guys. So first of all, I'm going to be running three copies of King of the Skull Servant. This card is self-explanatory. This is the boss monster of the deck. Um, its attack becomes um, the number of King of the Skull Servants and Skull Servants in your graveyard times 1,000. I think I've gotten this up to like 15, 16, maybe 17,000. I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. But the point is it can get really, really high up and it's an OTK deck. So uh, next, I'd like to run three copies of White Baking. Uh, white Baking uh, has a pretty cool effect as well. This card is named because becomes Skull Servant while in the graveyard. If a level 3 or lower zombie monster monsters you control would be destroyed by battle or card effect, you can discard this card instead. If this card is sent to the graveyard, you can add two monsters with different names to uh, from your deck to your hand, except White Baking, that are either Skull Servant or specifically list Skull Servant in their text, then discard one card. You can only use the effect of White Baking once per turn. So this is the card that you are going to use both to protect your monsters, but you also want to dump it in your grave as quickly as possible because it pops off all your combos. So definitely need three of these in there. Next, I like to run three copies of White Prince. White Prince is also a super dope card. Uh, this card is sent to the graveyard. You can send one Skull Servant and one Lady of White from your hand and or deck to the graveyard. You can banish two Skull Servants uh, and this card from your graveyard. Then special summon one King of the Skull Servants from your deck. This card names become Skull Servant while it is in the graveyard. So my favorite thing to do is dump this in the grave. Uh, then use this effect to add two of these Skull Servants to my hand. Uh, it's usually White Prince and then one other. Um, and then I'll dump the White Prince. White Prince allows me to dump uh, Lady in White and Skull Servant to the grave. So I have a bunch of fodder for my boss monster. Plus if I want to I can search uh, my boss monster from my deck. And summon it using this thing's effect. So... This, for sure, also is a three of. And since you're using three of those, you also need three copies of Lady in White, so you can dump a bunch of stuff in the grave, as well as three copies of Skull Servant. Now, Skull Servant is a vanilla monster. However, um, Lady in White has a really, really good effect, even uh, while it's on the field. So its effect is um, face a level three or lower zombie-type monsters you control except Lady in White cannot be destroyed by battle and are unaffected by spells and trap cards. So if you're OTKing and you know your opponent has like a back row or whatever, it's very uh, it's super dope to use like um, White Prince's effect. You can banish these two uh, to the remove from play along with this special summon your boss monster. Once your boss monster is out, there's a couple different ways uh, to take this Lady in White and special summon it from the banish zone and once it's special summoned your monster has protection uh and then you can attack for game so i think that's kind of dope uh next i like to run three copies of white princess white princess has two effects it's again just like most of these cards have uh has multiple uses so this card's name becomes skull servant while it is in the graveyard if this card is normal or special summoned you can send one white prince from your deck to the graveyard so if you happen to have nothing else um you can normal summon this and right prince will go to the grave uh let me dig it up real quick white prince and then you can uh you pop off its combos as well and then during either player's turn you can send this card from your hand or field of the graveyard all monsters currently on the field lose attack and defense equal to their own level slash rank times 300 until the end of this turn so if something ever happens um Let's say I don't end up with King of the Skull Servants on the field or whatever. Or if my effect is negated or any situation, you know. Um, this thing, I can use this effect and immediately lower all my opponent's attack points. Plus, if this is on the field, um, it's only uh, its attack is only go down by 300. And it'll gain 1,000 since this will be dumped to the grave. So technically, it'll go up by 700 while your opponent's monsters lose a considerable amount of attack. So you can also use that kind of offensively because you can use it on either player's turn. Uh Next, I like to run three copies of White Mirror. Uh, I think this card is pretty essential just because you need a way to bring back your monsters that are uh, removed from play. Uh, this card's name becomes Skull Servant What is in the Graveyard. You can discard this card, then activate one of the following effects. Target one of your banished Skull Servant or White Mares to return it to the graveyard. Or you can target one of your banished Lady in White or King of the Skull Servants and Special Summon it. So a really easy way to bring back your banished King of the Skull Servants. Or like I was saying earlier, uh, if Lady in White ever gets banished, you can discard this in order to Special Summon this. And uh, your King of the Skull Servants uh, will be protected. So that's also a pretty good card. Uh, next are some of the non-King of the Skull Servants cards, uh, support specifically, but um, I like to run three copies of Unizombie. Unizombie is pretty good. Uh, its effect is 
You can target one face-up monster on the field, discard one card, and if you do, increase that target's level by one. You can target one face-up monster on the field. Monsters you control cannot attack for the rest of the turn except zombie monsters. Also send one zombie monster from your deck to the graveyard. Increase the level of that targets by one. So basically, the way this deck works is you just want to dump as much stuff in the grave as you possibly can. This one allows you to dump one from your, um, from your hand as well as your deck. So you can do two dumps on the same turn. Um, the only thing is this is a pretty easy Ash Blossom target. Um, so that's why I have, I've included some other cards in this deck that are kind of workarounds so we can dump other cards in the grave because in my experience, the last deck that I posted, it was pretty good, but a lot of times I found myself in a situation where I would just have Unizombie on the field, uh, first turn, and then I would try to use its effect, uh, and then I would get Ash Blossomed and then I would have really have nowhere else to go. So after that, I decided to make, um, some decent changes to this deck that would actually improve it. So this time around, I'm going to be running only two copies of Sharani Solitaire. Uh, you contribute one zombie monster, special summon one zombie monster tuner uh, with zero defense from your deck. So basically, you're just um, destroying itself in order to search and summon Unizombie. And then you can go into Unizombie's effect from there. Uh, and I'm also running one copy of Gozuki, uh, one copy of Mezuki. Gozuki is super dope because uh, you can send a zombie monster from Dark to the Grave. That's another thing that, you know, um, this, this, and this were usually like the cards that I'd want to see on the field, you know. Uh, but... Uh, if they get Ash Blossom, you're kind of screwed. So that's why I made some changes, and we'll look at the changes going forward, uh, thanks to the new support, at least. So I like to run one copy of Chang Shi, the Spirit Doe. Um, during your main phase, you can send one zombie monster from your deck uh, to the graveyard. If this card is banished, you can banish one zombie monster in your graveyard. Special summon this card, but place it on the bottom of the deck when it leaves the field. You can only use each effect of Chang Shi, the Spirit Doe, once per turn. So you must be thinking, hey, this is level six. How are you even summoning this thing, right? Um, that's why I have this spell card in this deck of Gold Sarcophagus. I wasn't running this before, but I found this combo online and it's actually pretty decent. So if I use Gold Sarcophagus uh, banishing this, I can immediately use its effect. Um, so let's say in a scenario, this actually happened to me once. So I went for Unizombie and a Unizombie got Ash Blossomed. And so I can use Gold uh, gold Sarcophagus from there, banishing this, and then uh, banishing one of my other zombie monsters in my grave, special summoning this, and then continuing off with more combos. So even if you or your opponent manages to Ash Blossom once, you still have other things that you can do, uh, which is pretty decent. Um, so after that aforementioned uh, Gold Sarcophagus, we have three copies of Hand Destruction. Now, this is a pretty easy way, in my opinion, just to get a bunch of cards in the grave as quickly as possible. Um, let's say you get Ash Blossomed or whatever, you know, um, you still have a bunch of cards in the grave and then you can still pop off combos from the grave, especially with Right Prince. So if Right Prince is in the grave, you can still be able to pop off combos even if Unizombie or something gets negated. And I think this is just a very easy way to do that. And also, I also like to use one copy of Card Destruction. You want to dump as much in the grave as you can. That's just self-explanatory. Uh, this card really helps you do it. Uh, next, I like to run... Two copies of Book of Life. Now, I was thinking of switching one of these for Called by the Grave. Um, I don't know if I should, just because Called by the Grave does... Uh, it does have the ability to st shut down hand traps like Ash Blossom and whatnot. But this, uh, sometimes you really do need to be able to um, reborn your monsters, bring back your monsters, especially if you're using something like card destruction or hand destruction, you know, uh, the, you have a chance for your boss monster or whatever to end up in the grave. And so you want to be able to bring it back if possible. Um, next, I like to run one copy of one, one for one. It's pretty self-explanatory. Send one monster from your hand to the graveyard, special summon one level one monster from your hand or deck. Send any of your monsters, special summon your boss monster. Pretty easy. Uh, one copy of Foolish Burial. Usually, I like to use this on, where is it? White Baking. White Baking is a super dope card. Um, that goes to the grave. Its effect pops off, and then I can, uh, add this to my hand and one of the cards, send that to the grave, and then its effect pops off, and then it's just very, very easy. Um, next, I like to use Reasoning, um, because it's downside of sending all the cards that I drew, whatever, to the grave. It doesn't really have a negative impact. It's probably actually better. Um, since I'm banishing cards, the last spell card I like to use is one copy of Burial from a Different Dimension. Target up to three banished monsters, return them to the graveyard. That works really well with Right Prince, because after it uses its effect in order to banish itself and to others, I can bring it back to the, um, graveyard, and then if I wanted to use it again, because I believe it's not once per turn, um... 
So lastly, I know that was 40 cards. I do run two more. I like to run 42. That's because I have two copies of Infinite Impermanence. And I think this card is very, very important in this deck because a lot of times I come across cards like uh, Master or Dark Law or whatever, and it's just like everything that goes to the graveyard is automatically banished. That will destroy this deck. That will put an end to this deck immediately. So you want to make sure you have something that can at least negate um, monster effects, I would say. So this is very important um next for the extra deck i like to run one copy of the brand new immortal dragon oh that looks shiny look at that uh um so it, it's a zombie synchro so you can actually pop off even more combos from there if you wanted to but um during your main phase you can send one zombie monster from your deck to your graveyard if you do this card's level becomes a difference in the original devil levels so i really like this card because if i end up with unizombie i send one to the grave or whatnot um, I sent two to the grave. Actually, one second. Let me pull up my Unizombie. So this is level three, right? So if I discard one from my hand and then one from my deck, it becomes level five if I just choose to use it on itself. And then I have any of my level ones on the field. Like, let's say I have White Prince or I have Skull Servant on the field or I have my King of the Skull Servants on the field. Um, I can immediately tune those off into a level five, meaning Immortal Dragon. And now Immortal Dragon's effect is going to activate. I can send one's, another zombie from my deck to the grave, which... Um, this thing, uh, white baking, is actually once per turn. Uh, where did it go? I have such a mess on the side. I don't even want to tell you guys. But white baking is once per turn. Uh, however, white prince is not. So white prince, you can get away with uh, multiple things. Uh, white prince is right over here. So white baking, once per turn. White prince is uh, is not once per turn. So you can dump this over and over and take advantage of its effect. Just keep dumping your cards. So as many times as you can do it uh in one turn the better because it is a otk deck so this really does help with that plus it has a recycling ability uh when your zombie monster is destroyed by battle while this card is in your graveyard you can special summon this card but banish it when it leaves the field so that's pretty good too um next i like to run one copy of the new skeletal dragon felgrand um this card is pretty decent in my opinion um it just takes a zombie 200 plus one non-tuner monster. So it's generic for this deck. You pretty much summon it with anything. Um, if this card is special summon, you can target one monster your opponent controls or in their graveyard, banish it. If a monster or monster is special summoned from um, either uh, either graveyard while this monster is on the field, except during your damage step, you can target one other monster on the field and negate its effects until the end of the turn. So it's a third negate essentially for this deck, and I think that's uh, kind of important. As many negates as we can get, the better. Um lastly or not lastly but next we have red eyes zombie necro dragon this one i don't use as often but it is a decent card and it does have the ability to revive your monsters so it gains 100 attack and defense for each zombie monster on the field and in the graveyard um this works really well just as like uh, a secondary king of the skull servants i guess it's not as strong but still um you can special summon uh, when another zombie monster is destroyed by battle you can special summon one zombie monster from either graveyard to your field you can only use the effect of zaretta zombie necro dragon once per turn so i like it as a revive but most of the time um it's usually just for the attack um next i like to run one copy of the brand new red eyes zombie dragon lord now this is i believe a level 10 so it's a little bit harder to bring out but it is completely possible on this deck uh, i just takes a zombie tuner plus one non-tuner during your opponent's turn quick effect you can target one zombie monster in your graveyard except red eyes zombie dragon lord special summon it so most of the time that's going to be my king of the skull servants um if this card is in your graveyard you can banish one zombie monster you control special summon this card you can only use the first effect of you can use each effect once per turn so i've only i've tested this like two or three times um I've had a situation once where I had this on the field. Uh, I can banish it using Red Eyes Zombie Dragon Lord, bring this back, and now that my King of the Skull Servants is banished, we'll say that's the banish zone, I can then use my right uh, right mare uh, that allows me to discard it and then special summon my there uh, before that was banished. And on top of that, since the white mare goes to the graveyard, it gains another 1,000 attack. So there's, there's a decent amount of synergy and combos with these new cards. Uh, next, I like to run one copy of Beezles of the Diabolical Dragons. Um, it takes one Dark Tuner plus one Non-Tuner Monster, so it's very easy to make in this deck. It's just a level 8. Um, cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects. If you take uh, damage from an attack involving this card or from an opponent's card effect, this card gains uh, attack equal to the damage you took. Uh, this is, I would say, like the rock of this deck. This is um, one of the more sturdy cards that if you, uh, maybe if you have the, honestly, I haven't had to do it too much, but if you have the need to like stall or something, this this card can protect you. Um, I like to run one copy of Psy Frame Lord Omega, one copy of Chaotic Ruler, uh, Chaos Ruler, the Chaotic Magical Dragon, uh, two copies of Black Rose Dragon, 
Um, and that is it for the synchro monsters. So next, uh, we're going on to the link monsters. Uh, this one's pretty obvious. You got to run, you got to run Link Rebo. That's for sure. Um, I'm running one copy of Vampire Sucker. It was just reprinted in Ghost from the Past 2, so I managed to get it pretty cheap. Uh, next, I like to run Pentastag. I'm kind of experimenting with this one. Um, Pentastag, I think that's what it's called. Um, it just takes two effect monsters. Your Link Monster, if your uh, Link Monster attacked a defense monster, it inflict piercing battle damage. So if this is on the field, it's pointing to this, and I attack a defensive monster, uh, it does piercing, and I think that's pretty good. It's another way to OTK. A lot of times, if uh, going first... I remember if someone put something on like defense mode or whatever, like personally, like going against Gradles, you know what I mean? If I attack it in defense mode, um, the, it doesn't really matter because he's just going to take my card and then he'll have zero attack because he'll have uh, no Skull Serum monsters in his graveyard. But it was like a stalemate. But now I at least can uh, use full advantage of this thing's effect and I can do piercing and still be able to win in a lot of different situations. Uh, nice. Uh, next, I like to run... Uh, Nightmare Unicorn, Nightmare Phoenix. Uh, this is just for spell and trap removal. Um, Twin Twisters is another thing you could consider running for spell and trap removal. That's something I have side decked. So that's just something uh, that would work really well just because I think it requires you to discard one. So it, um, it does help you with this deck a lot. Uh, and lastly, I like to run Levi or the Sea Dragon. This card is really good as well. It just takes two level threes, which there is a decent amount of this deck. Um, once per turn, you can detach one XC's monster from this card to banish one level four lower monster. Special summon it to your side of the field. Uh, sorry, target one banish level four lower monster. Special summon that target to your side of the field. So it's just another way to just bring back some of your banished cards. And I think that is a really good card to use. Some other cards you could maybe consider. Opti Camouflage Armor is kind of decent because if you equip it to your King of the Skull Servants, it can attack directly. However, um, it's not a really reliable way to add that thing to your hand besides drawing it. And I think it kind of slows the deck down in my experience. So that's why I'm not using that. You can use stuff like Gravity Bind if you really wanted to. It just stops your opponent from being able to attack you because most of the time they'll use a uh, level four or higher. But the thing is, it doesn't work with XCs or Link Monsters. So that's something to consider. Also, um, I think it also kind of does slow the deck down which is why i don't use it uh myself there's a bunch of other cards you can think about um i'm just trying to do that off the top of my head you can use double a zeus but i'm only using one xc's monster so i don't know how reliable double a zeus would be in this situation um yeah i think uh that is probably the best version of my deck that i've made in a quite a, a long time um if you guys have any suggestions for improvements or any cards that I can put in this deck or maybe side deck or something, i definitely love to hear them. Um, anyways, guys, this is Platter McCard signing off for the day. If you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. And oh my goodness, look at the time. It's time to do, 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 do.